Flores, and I'm a sophomore bioengineering major here at Miami University, and I'm here with my mentor, Ethan Cunningham, who's a junior bioengineering major here at Miami, and today he's going to talk to us about his cohort's impressive Envision 2040 project and how it's helping him prepare for the future. So Ethan, to start off, can you tell me why this project is important? Thanks, Asia. Um, this project's super important because if we're not future-minded, um, if we have no goals, if we don't know where we're headed, um, then we have like no structure of what we're doing now. And I think when we came up with this project, obviously we're mid, like in the middle of a pandemic. And so nobody could have seen this coming. And so we're thinking, okay, what are the things that nobody can see coming in 2040, uh, in the next 20 years? And that's, that's basically what our goal is, um, to try to predict the unpredictable and see uh, what we look like in 2040. Yeah, I totally agree. That's so interesting. So, I mean, you guys have been working on this for going on a year now. So during that time, what are some of the greatest insights you've gained about this project? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, me personally, I am looking at some of the like demographics and stuff, like how, like what, what are people going to, what's the people population going to look like um, in the U.S. come 2040? Um, my biggest personally my biggest insight is one um the white population percentage is going to go down so we're going to be looking at um approaching i think 2050 is when we cross the actual mark of like white non-hispanic population to hit like 49.6 percent um, in the u.s which is um just sounds like a number right now but when you think about it moving into 20 years um we talk a lot about diversity today but once we reach like 2040, we're going to see a lot more um, uh, BIPOC people in, you know, in offices in important positions. And so like re, re, we talk about reaching critical masses and like comfortability and stuff like that and like making decisions and respecting decisions, which I think is huge. And like now we're kind of looking at if you look around people my age, there's, you know, more women in school than men. Um, and you think about like, especially me when I go to class, like if if the women in class are doing most of the team projects, which is sometimes the norm, like come 20 years, they're going to be doing all the work in the executive office. Right. And so which I think is really cool. Um, another uh, another like standout point is, you know, people my age, I'll be 40 years old in 2040. And so we'll be in kind of places of power or importance, influence, stuff like that. And when you look at it, like, uh, like me personally, when I think of diversity and stuff, it doesn't seem that weird to me personally, like the, the idea of like, um, other people of color, like having power. And like a good example is like for eight years of my life, Barack Obama was the president. And now for like, at least the next four years, Kamala Harris is going to be um, the vice president. And so if you think about that, by the time I turn 24 in 2024, there'll be, a uh, a person of color in either the presidency or the the vice presidency office which is kind of like it doesn't seem like a lot but i think that's kind of like huge like cultural norm that might define our generation yeah those are all really really interesting points so you know taking all of that into account how has this project helped you prepare for the future that's a great question so me personally um i as a, as a white male looking at topics of diversity can kind of be seen. Sometimes when I read books and stuff, it's like, oh, like the white man is kind of the, the evil person. And, it, and it's not so much of the evil person there's, you know, um, but like the, the Institute itself, like white supremacy, white power, white norm, normativity, stuff like that. And so looking at it, how can I just like be an ally and how can I look to intentionally be more inclusive? Um, read a great book called Whistling Vivaldi by um, Dr. Claude M. Steele, who his main research, phenomenal research is on stereotype threat. And I know kind of like since we we're little, we've, we've talked about stereotyping and how stereotyping is bad, which it is, I totally agree. But the, his research is on the effects of stereotype, stereotype threat. And this is where I think we can insert a lot of intentionality into like, if we understand that um, people under, stereoty under stereotype threat, they, they perceive these cues of like, oh, I'm not really wanted here. And, you know, people on like my side, the white male side of the equation are like, 
like that's not true like you know try to like rationalize like okay so there's no like people of color like in office like that doesn't mean you're not wanted here but people are picking up on cues and in any small cue like the smaller the more and the smaller the cue the more intentional you can and have to be to remove that that threat and um people notice that like way more than you think and i think um as like our generation grows up um there's surveys and stuff that like people people want to be hired by companies who um foster inc inclusivity diversity and who actually you know care about their people yeah absolutely and i think that discussion is becoming um more and more part of the equation um as we become more educated as individuals um, and I think this stuff is really important to talk about. And I think it's great that you've been doing all this research about it and are gonna be able to share that with people. And I'm excited to hear more about it. So thank you so much for being here, Ethan. And I can't wait to hear more. I know, thank you for having me. Excited for you to see what we have.